What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. Fat Loss Friday, baby. Fridays, we try and hold live Q&As to discuss your fat loss and fitness questions. Today, I wanted to start this talking about my top three tips to lose body fat. Thank you guys for being here. Check out the amazing sponsors below. Get your blood work tested, extra virgin olive oil, grass-fed steak delivered to your door, plus the Dolce Diet personalized diet and exercise programs, all available in those links below. Now, when we talk about fat loss, briefly, many people misconstrue fat loss and weight loss. Weight loss is not the goal here. Fat loss is. Weight loss is the totality of everything on your physique, including your beautiful, hard training muscles. We don't want to lose those. Fat loss is the goal. This video is discussing targeted, specific, subcutaneous, and visceral body fat reduction. The best way to do that, well, Number one is we're going to talk about calories. We're going to talk about food. But first, let me talk about exercise. And I put out some videos recently this week that gone went viral. I think one of the videos I put out yesterday has over a quarter of a million views already on TikTok talking about the importance of, drum roll, walking. Walking at low intensities is the most beneficial form of exercise for body fat reduction. We'll talk about calories in, calories out. We'll talk about macros. We'll even talk about strength training. But when we speak about the most important exercise for fat loss, we must put walking by far as the number one exercise, not strength training, not weightlifting, not running, not assault bike, not swimming, not air dine. None of those equal the benefits of walking, but also walking has the lowest possible barrier to entry. Now, many of the fitness influencers out there assume that the community looks and is able to perform like they are. We know that's not true. I know the average American Three out of four Americans now are either overweight or obese. If you are overweight, if you are obese, if you are not skilled in exercise, guess what? You should not be exercising at high intensities with high volume. What you should be doing is you should be exercising at low intensities. And this is where walking comes in. Walking relatively long distances at relatively slow paces is what humans excel at more than any other animal on this earth. This is why humans are here. We are bipedal organisms uniquely designed to travel far distances at relatively slow rates. This is how our energy systems and our muscular system is developed. Humans are rather weak with regards to strength or muscle contractile ability when compared to other land animals. We're not that strong. We're, we're kind of smart, but athletically, we're not special. We're not that fast either. We can't run very fast when compared to other land animals. Again, our point of differentiation is the ability to walk long distances at relatively slow paces, and this is now working inside our natural design. This is how our energy systems are built to operate most efficiently. Walking is regenerative. So if you are strength training, if you are lifting weights, you can walk every single day and not impede from your strength training progress. In fact, science has shown, volumes and volumes of science has shown, Walking actually improves your ability to recover from intense bouts of exercise. Some of this is, is due to the removal of metabolic waste that accrues as a result of high-intensity exercise. 
there is another capacity for walking to increase blood flow, nutrient transport, oxygen, oxygen delivery to those previously worked out muscles and prepares them. Number one, it recovers them and then prepares them for the next training session. Walking is an aerobic exercise. Walking utilizes stored body fat as the primary fuel source. Not stored glycogen expressed as glucose. When we train in higher intensities, such as jogging, running, swimming, assault biking, lifting weights, mixed martial arts competition, all of that is burning glucose. Walking is one of the few exercise modalities that utilizes almost exclusively stored fat as the primary energy source to not walk is to do an extreme disservice to your health, fitness, body composition goals. Walking is key, my friends, and best yet, anybody can walk. No experience necessary. And what we say with our clients who are even obese, morbidly obese, we simply say in conjunction with a high net nutrient, healthful whole food program, just like our Living Lean program, which you can click the link below and start or check out the Living Lean plan, following a healthy meal plan, not focused on counting calories, balancing macros, creating caloric deficits through food reduction. No, we don't talk about that. When you are eating a healthful diet, you now have the fuel, the energy to start increasing a walking program. We will walk, we will work with many of our clients alongside their medical team, their primary care physician, their general practitioner, their endocrinologist, their cardiologist. We will work with the, the medical team on behalf of our client to help build them a healthy lifestyle. And it always starts with walking. And we will simply say, walk to your mailbox and come in the house. Day one, walk past your mailbox to your driveway. Day two, walk to your neighbor's mailbox. Day three, walk to the corner. Day four, cross the street. Day five, slowly but surely, we get our clients to start walking just a little bit more per day. We say, if you simply walk one extra minute per day in a month, you'll be walking 30 minutes at a clip. Think about that. That's for initially you walk 30 seconds out your front door you turn around and come home, day one. Day two, you walk 45 seconds out your door, you turn around and come home. Day three, you walk one minute out your door, you turn around and come home. That's all it takes. How simple is that? In conjunction with a healthful, moderated meal plan, walking is the lowest possible barrier to entry for every single human on the planet. And it makes me angry when I hear a lot of these fitness influencers and fitness podcasters and, and, and fitness media, they dismiss the power of walking. And they push towards much more exclusionary, elitist, advanced training concepts where the average person is simply incapable. They are setting themselves up for failure immediately. They are not scaling. They're jumping right into an advanced level training technique. That's like you, 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 you take, you sign up for Spanish class. They drop you off alone in Tijuana or Mexico city expecting you to navigate your way there alone for a week. It's impossible. You're setting yourself up to fail. Walking is the way to go. So walking, number one tip, you want to start at wherever you are right now on your fitness journey. You have a garbage pail diet. You, you have, you know, you have zero training experience. You just don't know what to do. Go for a walk. 
Now, ideally, best practices, we want to walk first thing in the morning. Wake up, use the restroom, wash your hands, drink 16 to 32 ounces of room temperature water. I sprinkle a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of fresh squeezed lime into mine while my espresso is brewing. While I'm boiling a little bit of water, I do the pour over technique. I drink about four ounces of a very dark coffee or a double espresso, which is two ounces if I have that ability. Take that little sip to get that caffeine boost. You don't have to. That's what I do. And I put on my shoes. I walk out the door. That is the ideal because we're engaging in low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity, which is exclusively aerobic in that you're using stored fat as the primary energy source. It is being, it is being performed while fasted, which means our definition of fasted is the absence of insulin. There's many definitions of fasting and fasted. Our definition, which corresponds to those is the absence of insulin. Science has clearly shown Dr. Andrew Huberman has confirmed our statements, my statements, for the last nearly two decades on this exact topic. Low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity in the absence of insulin has been proven to be a more efficient means of gender specific fat reduction as compared to fed or in the presence of insulin. This is due to the alpha and beta receptors inside the fat cells. In the presence of insulin, the alpha and the beta receptors are not as efficient. That's it. Insulin creates an inefficiency in the release of fat, specifically in those stubborn areas that we all have. My stubborn area is my love handles. That, that's my stubborn area. I understand, like I will diet down, I'll look good, I'll get striations in my chest, vascularity, boom, pumping in the bicep, and it takes my love handles a heck of a lot longer to disappear when I'm really trying to lean out. I notice it dramatically when I'm performing fasted lists. You have your trouble area also. Now, it works systemically in all fat throughout the body, and this is not spot reduction. This is simply improving efficiency of your fat-burning mechanisms. So walking, I could, go, I could do this entire video on walking, and I will down the road. That's fine. Please, I'm going to answer questions here in a few moments. Leave your questions, leave your questions, leave your questions, please. Number two, my fat-burning, fat loss tip is not reducing calories. Dolce, what about the first law of thermodynamics, man? Dolce, you are a hypocrite. Or you're, you're, you don't know what you're doing. You're a science denier. That's what I mean, not hypocrite. You're a science denier. We all know calories in versus calories out. Er, time out. You, you, you didn't let me finish. Let me finish here. We do not bring about fat loss through caloric reduction. Why is that? Because you can only drop calories so much before you create nutrient deficiencies. Remember, every calorie you consume is not simply a unit of energy. One calorie is the equivalent of a unit of energy. That is a calorie, but with that calorie, that food component contains vital micronutrients and phytochemicals such as maybe calcium and magnesium and phosphorus and iodine and zinc and copper and selenium. We start going through the list of vital nutrients. Once we start dropping calories for targeted fat loss, very soon do we hit the floor where calories can go no lower without now reducing the total intake of vital micronutrients and phytochemicals necessary for optimal cellular function. And look in the mirror right now. What you see in the mirror is a facade. What you see is not true. What you see is not really there. What you see, your eyes deceive you. Because what you see in the mirror 
if you were to take a powerful microscope and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, zoom in what you would see is a community of billions and trillions of cells. Humans are cellular organisms. Everything you see here is trillions of cells all shaped together to take on this form. Those cells are doing very specific jobs as we speak. They are living and dying, working and thriving. These very specific cells need very specific amounts of high quality nutrients in order to do their job. Once we start lowering calories, we reduce the nutrients that provide for the cells. And this is why dropping calories does not work. Does not work. Now, don't eat like a dickhead. Pardon my French. Do not eat poorly. Do not eat high calorie foods that have low net nutrient capacity, which is what most people do by following the sad diet, the standard American diet. When you're eating these hyper palatable foods, which are calorie dense, but nutrient insufficient. So now you're eating high calories and you're still nutrient deficient, robbing the cells of the vital micros and phytos that those cells need to A, do their job and B, to thrive throughout their life cycle and C, give birth to new healthy cells. So dropping calories drops nutrients, which reduces your workforce which is your cells. That makes sense, right? You with me? Say yes. Thank you. So instead, what do we do? We build baseline nutrient targets. In fact, on our programs, we set a floor. Your calories can go no lower on a fat loss program because we know, remember I said in the beginning of this video, we're talking about fat loss, not weight loss. Because if we wanted to talk about just weight loss, well, guess what? That's easy. That's easy. You can go and lose all your muscle tissue. You could lose 100 pounds of muscle tissue. You'd have near 100% body fat percentage. You would, be, you would look like a Slimer from Ghostbusters. You'd be just this big block, glob, glob of, of subcutaneous and visceral body fat with zero muscle tissue. So weight loss isn't the goal, right? Fat loss is the goal, targeted fat loss. Now, how do we do this? We actually increase. We increase your nutrient intake. We increase your calories. You'll find if you're following our three weeks to shred it program or our living lean program, the links are below this video. Learn more about those. You'll see your calories actually increase for some people quite dramatically. And they freak out at first. They say, man, I think there's something wrong with the program. These calories are almost double what I'm used to eating. I don't think this is correct. We go in and we take a look. We say, no, please trust the process. This is perfect. You've been chronically malnutrition, malnourished. You've been chronically under eating. And, they, and usually they say, well, I haven't, I haven't lost weight. Like I'm, I'm, I'm cutting calories. I'm, I'm barely eating anything. I'm scared to eat more food. And we say, well, how's your progress? But they say, it's been horrible. My hair is thin and brutal. I have dark bags under my eyes. My stomach's always upset. It seems like I'm getting weaker in the gym. It looks like I'm getting fatter in the mirror. I don't know what's happening. I'm not losing any weight. I don't know what to do. I've plateaued. We increase their calories through healthful whole foods. And what happens immediately? They feel better. Immediately, they look better. Immediately, they have more energy. Immediately, their digestive system works better. Immediately, their body starts working the way it was intended to. And now we can apply the training effect, which is this is where all physique transformation comes in. But it starts with a well-balanced, healthful meal plan. Now, inside that meal plan, we talk about one gram of protein per pound, a relatively lean goal body weight. And then you can, if, you, if you're not following one of our online programs, that's fine. You can start with one gram of protein per pound of relatively lean body mass, one gram of carbohydrate per pound of relatively lean body mass, and half a gram of fat per pound of relatively lean body mass. This gives you a great entry into a moderated, healthful, whole food program. 
Not too much. It's not too little. Now, you might need to tweak and go up a little bit or down a little bit to suit your goals. And we would say spread that over four specific meals per day. The four by four. Four meals, four hours apart, four times per day. It is a great way to enter in. Again, if it's a little confusing to you, if you need some help, if you want to follow a personalized program, click the link below for our three weeks to shredded program or our living lean program. All of that is programmed for you. Our sophisticated rule engine inside our online platform does all the work, takes all the guesswork out of it for you. I just want to give, I want to help you as much as possible get locked in. Now, number three, number three is not fat burners. Number three is not waist trainers. Number three is not skinny tees. What is number three? Number three is sleep. sleep. How easy is this, guys? Number three is sleep. Going to bed at a reasonable hour and ensuring you are getting high quality, high duration sleep consistently. This is every night. This is not five days a week. This is not six days a week. This is like 29 days out of 30. You are focused on high quality, high duration sleep. And we simply say, go to bed, lay in your bed nine hours before you're scheduled to wake up. This gives you all the time you need to, to pick up and, and read a book. This gives you all the time you need to scroll Instagram and see what, I don't know, Jordan Peterson's talking about or catching up on your favorite podcast clips. This gives you all the time you need to roll over and, and tap the shoulder of the missus and, and you know have a horizontal consensual conversation. Go to bed nine hours before you're scheduled to wake up because did you know fat is primarily lost while you sleep? It's stimulated during the day through your activity, but we lose most of the actual fat through respiration. While we sleep and we breathe, we breathe out moisture. Inside that moisture is little, 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 little pieces of the fat. So it, it, it is actually interesting. It's kind of gross to think while we're sleeping, we're actually breathing out little particles of fat that was stored around our stomachs. Now, we lose fat also. We lose it through respiration. We lose it through perspiration and in, in smaller degrees, but we do lose it through urination and defecation. We lose fat. The stored fat has to go somewhere. We lose that through water molecules. We lose it through moisture. And one of the best ways is while we're actually sleeping for eight hours at night, but also the mechanisms of fat loss are working while we sleep. And this is the importance of high quality, high duration sleep, ensuring we are getting a minimum of five 90 minute sleep cycles. We know we sleep in 90 minute sleep cycles, almost exactly 90 minutes, by the way, for nearly everyone. We need at least five of these sleep cycles, which is seven and a half hours of deep, restful sleep. Now, most people think if they go to bed seven and a half hours before they're scheduled to wake up, that's good enough. It's not. They'll be lucky if they get four sleep cycles because it takes some time to fall asleep. And then you fall asleep. It takes some time to get into a sleep cycle. And it also takes some time to come out of your last sleep cycle. So going to bed seven or even eight hours before you're scheduled to wake up pretty much ensures you are not going to get high quality, high duration sleep. We strongly suggest you start changing your lifestyle, modifying your schedule to get your tail in bed nine hours before you're scheduled to wake up. So now let's recap here. Number one, walking. Walking 30 to 60 minutes per day. Ideally, 45 minutes is the holy grail. That is the number one exercise for fat loss. Number two is not cutting calories. Do not cut calories. And in fact, stabilize and increase your calories. We can create caloric deficits through energy expenditure during low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity, such as walking or high intensity resistance training, which you should also be doing, such as lifting weights, building skeletal muscle. That is true. That is huge. That is on our list. That is on our list. But remember, we're talking about specific fat loss, the top three tips to lose body fat. And number three is getting nine hours of bedtime, ensuring you are getting eight hours or more of high quality sleep. Let me start answering some of your questions. What's up, Jock? Good to see you. 
Um, Kaiser, hey, do you think it's worth getting a personal trainer at the gym? I would get a, a introductory session. I would see what your trainer knows, what your rapport is. Can they teach you something? Many people work with trainers to learn things they do not know, to troubleshoot some technical issues they're having with their form. But number three is to keep them accountable. And that does matter. Um, have you ever worked with someone with type 2 diabetes? Do you still recommend all the same cars? Joe, I have. We do. Consistently, we work with people with all fours. Pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, PCOS. Um, and yes, now I can't give specific information, but every one of those individuals we have worked with that have some sort of blood sugar issue all consume high quality carbohydrates relative to their doctor's supervision. And that's very important. What's up, Tickle? Jock, stand up for seeing 10 minute walks are a fantastic idea. I love them. Me too. Big stand is great. Drink a lot of water. True, true, true. Bo, what's up, my man? Coach, do you do hinging deadlifts on pulling back day? I Yes, I do. I do. I do most of the hinge work on back day. Although I do usually I'll do unilateral like um, kettlebell, dumbbell, crossbody, single leg RDLs um, on leg day. Jeremy, F you, brother. Mark, love you too, my man. Um, the ban is definitely listed. I see your post everywhere. Awesome. Guys and gals, please, if you see any, any of our videos pop up in your stream, click on them. I just ask, click on the videos that you see, click on them, let them run in the background, open a second tab and go back to doing the scroll that you were doing. That would be so awesome. The more engagement we can get from you would be incredible. And anyone who really appreciates our community, you've been an OG in the community, you want to help grow our community, click on any of our playlists, click the playlist, let the playlist run in the background because it'll go from one Dolce video to another Dolce video to another Dolce video. Let it play. Watch all the content. If you can, click all the thumbs up. That would be awesome. But let it run in the background. Open up a new tab. And if you're doing some work or something else, do the work, but let the Dolce stuff run also. That would be an amazing way to help boost this channel and get us back into the algorithm where we once were before the shadow ban wiped us out. And we were shadow banned from speaking the truth once again. Tickle Stick, I've seen a lot more of his posts too. This makes me so happy. And thank you guys all for being here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing and, and always engage. We appreciate you. I do my road work. Got to get in the running. Awesome. Ant-Man, cardio's king. Yep. Uh, Peter, does your body ever adapt to lists and make it less effective over time? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Um, uh, awesome. Appreciate that. Financial Friday. Yeah, we'll do some Financial Fridays too. Random question. How do you feel about the health benefits of CMOS gold? I know nothing about it, so I can't speak honestly on it. My apologies. It could be good. It could be horrible. I have no information on it. People who count calories... The supermodel diet seems unhealthy. I was at cocaine and cigarettes, right? Uh, Bob or Chris, what's up, Bobby? Hey, Mike, after this, can I do the UFC fit or resistance type training or should I wait until late? I would wait until later in the day, brother. Um, 50 pound fat loss on our 12 week program. Guys, gals, if you're looking to lose 20, 40, 60 pounds or more, click the link below for our 12-week Living Lean, three weeks to shredded bundle. Every meal, every recipe, every workout is planned specifically for you. And there's even a little discount down there. Get going. Bobby, I am so happy for you, brother. So proud of you. Chris, three weeks to shredded works. Broke through a two-year plateau. I was able to shred 30 pounds of unuseful, unwanted way. I freaking love that, Chris. So proud of you, my man. It, it never, ever gets old. It never gets old. We first wrote Three Weeks to Shred It in 2007. We updated it in 2014. And then we released an online platform, an online personalized diet and exercise program based upon our bestsellers, Three Weeks to Shred It and Living Lean in 2015. And it never gets old. I mean, tens of thousands of online user, users, hundreds of thousands to millions of, of book purchasers and people who followed the program. And we have, we have thousands, I don't even know, untold thousands of testimonials that have come in. And it never gets old to see how amazing they are because I know each of you are individuals, individual hardworking humans that deserve to look, feel, and live your best lives. 
Ant Man. I bought raspberry, strawberries, grapes, and pineapple today. That sounds that is bomb. Invite me over. Um, BH, if you Dolce thoughts on baking sodium before training, does the performance gain outweigh the risk of shitting? Nope, nope, nope. I've I did that once, absolutely hated it, never needed to do it again. Nope, nope, nope. I would not do that. Uh, didn't know that right on uncle Mike would please make a video. I will. Yeah, I'll do a Kino body video here soon. Um, ancient hit that like button. People shark attack Fridays, baby. Hell yeah. I appreciate that guys. I guess please. If you would consider click that like button. I appreciate you Smith. I have a newborn seven month old. How can I fit in the full nine hours of sleep? It's impossible. It's not impossible. If you and your wife split shifts like my wife and I did my wife and I split shifts what does that mean she was on the night shift i was on the morning shift i went to bed early she stayed up with the baby i woke up with the baby so she could sleep in that worked extremely well here's the problem most husband and wives and hopefully traditional families who have children in the traditional structure there's a two-parent household those two parents they stay awake and they go to bed at the same time so now they are both exhausted can't do that can't do that. So what I would do is I would go to bed somewhere usually between eight and nine o'clock at night. My wife would stay up until 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And then I would wake up with the baby somewhere between, let's say, four and six a.m. And my wife would sleep in until maybe eight or nine. That way it worked out incredibly well. Everybody won. We were both well rested. I was better than she was because, you know, moms are breastfeeding and, and you know, they're more in tune with the sounds of the baby. But in time, she was able to sleep longer and get much better sleep. You have to split up the sleep schedule when you have new babies in the house. And we have a baby book coming out. It'll be out next spring. My wife and I wrote about the pregnancy, our two pregnancies, I should say hers, her two pregnancies. And uh, what we did in our lives, how we ate, how we trained, just how we we prepared and, and lived it. Um, what's the perfect Uncle Mike combo list seven days a week and three days of hit? You know, I like to go hiking. I like some longer duration. I do some sand dune sprints, which is like on all fours. It's more animal style, animal play. Um, I'm lucky that I live on the beach so I can just, you know, go right out on the dunes and hit some days like that. I'm walking right now. I'm getting about 15,000 steps per day on average. I'm just, I'm, I'm addicted to walking. I find excuses to walk. Um, I, I get up, I pace every phone call. I, I do not take phone call sitting down any phone call. I naturally now just get up and walk. Most of the things I do, I try and do them standing and walking and moving. I'll stretch. I'll just bang out a set of, of body weight squats for no reason. I'll drop and do sets of push-ups for no reason. I mean, I can't pass a chin-up bar without banging out a few chin-ups or knees to chest, toes to bars. Point is, movement is key. You do not have to train only at a, a, a predetermined time. I'm at that stage and I think I'm in the best shape of my life right now. You guys can see me. I'm big. I'm full. I'm vascular. My abs are fucking skin tight. I mean, I'm in, I'm at my, I'm actually getting glute striations right now and I'm not trying. I'm still eating 32 to 3,600 calories per day, practicing what I preach. So I'm, I'm very, very metabolically active because I'm constantly, constantly just being fit. Um, hey, coach, running a marathon two weeks, which coincides with the last two weeks of the Dolce Diet Living Lean. Any nutritional advice adjustments you recommend? Race day nutrition. Race day nutrition is more hydration and electrolyte imbalance. So I would make sure that my electrolytes are topped off. I would be adding, you know, salting my water, adding fresh squeezed lime juice to the water, uh, maybe a little bit of, of raw local honey squeezed into that water. That's a great thing we do with a lot of our competitive athletes, endurance athletes, and combat athletes. The Living Lean program is rather robust. We do not see a need to carbo load, and you are running a marathon in two weeks. We, what we say is maintain your, your current food intake because the last 10 to 15 days out, your training tapers. So as your training tapers, your glycogen reserves actually increase. Many people think they need to dramatically increase carb consumption while they're tapering. That's not true. Uh, GD, fan of the show, what do you do when you think you're hitting a plateau with weight loss and muscle gains? Uh, mahalo. Well, usually what I'll do is I'll increase my food intake and I'll pull back my training a little bit. 
Your body just needs a little break. It needs to reset itself. Your body, you are sense, you're sending multiple signals that you are entering into a starvation state. You need to offset that. So I will taper back the volume and the intensity of my training. I won't stop training. I'll switch over to more of aerobic type of work, a little bit more yoga, stretching, body weight calisthenics instead of the heavy weights. And I will increase my food anywhere between 130 and 150% for a three to five day period of time, eating the exact same food. I don't go out and eat burgers and like, I, well, I eat home cooked burgers that certified Piedmontese link below grass fed, grass finished burgers delivered to your door. Ooh, baby. So I eat burgers like twice a week, um, but I don't eat crappy food. I don't go out and eat junky food. I eat high quality food, not crappy food. Appreciate you being here, GD. Welcome. Um, Anthony coach, do you do hinging deadlifts on your pole days? I do them on both days, but I'll, I'll do unilateral work on my leg days. Um, simply because I'm squatting, I'm lunging, I'm doing step ups. I do Bulgarian splits. Um, and I'll do like unilateral single leg RDLs. Um, also I'm doing leg curls. I'm usually doing a, a lying seating or standing at least one of each. Any new menus on three weeks to shredded and living lean? Yes, we have updated versions of the, the three weeks of shredded and living lean program coming out you know, for the online platform. Um, we have a site update coming soon, which will be out in November. Brand new update to the, the entire user experience of the site. The price is going to be going up for all new users. So if you are not an active user of the Dolce Diet.com, I strongly suggest you take advantage of that discount code below. You get set up. You start your three weeks to shredded and living lean programs because the price is going to go up soon and you will be grandfathered in. Um, good couples split shifts. That's the truth. Smith says, thanks, bro. You're amazing. I appreciate that. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you all being here. Joe, you got it. Ocean swimming is stellar if you have access. So much more work fighting against the current. Well, that would be a glycolytic activity. I, like, I'm a fan of it. I'm not a very good swimmer, so I would never swim in the ocean. Uh, I'm still learning how to swim efficiently, and I cannot swim efficiently. So swimming to me is like running at a very fast pace. I'm dumping a lot of glycogen. I'm, I'm turning over a lot of glucose to swim because I'm not very good at it. Very few people can swim aerobically. So swimming is more along the lines of running, jogging and running closer to running because you're using stored glycogen. We're trying to avoid that. It's a great, great, great training method, but not for this targeted specific fat loss that we're talking about. Um, hey coach, does the temp at you do your lists affect the fat loss more or less? Um, I live in Hawaii and it's been hot, hot, hot. You know, there is good data out there on cold temp on what cold temperature exposure does to convert the bad white fat to the good brown fat. Now, that being said, the way you perform or the temperature with which you perform your exercise I haven't seen any compelling data that says one is better than the other. I think both have a positive or a negative, but there is interesting data that short burst exposure to extreme cold, specifically cold water has the ability to convert white fat to brown fat. The brown fat is the much more efficient. It's the desirable form of fat to have. White fat is very inefficient. Um, 1%, what's up? Still waiting on my sweater for my DDC. Uh, 1%, I'm sorry, I do not recognize your avatar name, so I don't know the name it's associated with. Just send a note to support, support at thedolcediet.com, and we will have it taken care of for you 100%. I don't know why, because I'm pretty sure all, even our last DDC, all, all shirts, um, books, certificates have already gone out. So uh, just send your email to the support team, support at thedolcediet.com. The team will take care of you. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, boys and girls of all ages, thank you guys all for being here. You are incredible. I appreciate you. I appreciate the time. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, hopefully that 
something here was was worthwhile. My job is to deliver actionable evidence based value so you can immediately start improving your life. That's kind of why I log on and what I try and do uh, to help you here. Jim, what's up, brother? Good to see you, Jim. Man. I always, always love seeing you chime in, homie. Um, thanks for everything you share, ma'am. I'm here for you, brother. Uh, thank you, coach. Always taking the time for the people. It is an honor and a pleasure. We need a Dolce push pull leg workout routine. I like that idea. I like that idea. I'd, I'd love, I'd, I would love to actually take you to the gym with me to do that, but I'm just not that guy. I feel so weird having like someone film me in the gym while I'm training or like to, to film myself is like, no way. Like my phone is it's it's in my backpack simply because I have a wife and kids at home and I need to be able to be reached. That's it. Like, man, I go to the gym and I see people on their phones in between sets. It's like they can't get their set done fast enough so they can put their face back in the phone. Actually, so I walk in the gym. I go to a pretty hardcore gym. I have my own gym here, but I go to a pretty hardcore gym because I like the energy, the atmosphere. They have 200 pound dumbbells, like hardcore strongman power lifter. They got monoliths. They got everything you could ever need. And I go walking in there and it's, it's like, there's a, you know, it's middle of the day. Middle of the day isn't kind of the hardcore crowd, but anyway, I'm in there in the middle of the day and there's three lap machines that are all like right next to each other. It's kind of like the, the back training area, three lap machines. I was looking to do some, some one arm, single arm lat pull downs. I go look around. There's three guys, different colors, different ethnicities, different age range, age ranges. So they're just three guys and they're all sitting on their machines and their heads are all down staring at their phone. And I'm like, these motherfuckers, like, I want to use one of those. And you motherfuckers are on their phone. And then one guy puts his phone down and, like, goes to work, which then sends the, the, the signal peripheral vision to the other guy who puts his phone down, which then sends the signal to the other guy who puts his phone down. I was like, are these guys texting each other? So I like stood there and I watched and then they went, they did their set. As soon as their set was done, they grabbed their phone again and they're just J hooked sitting on their bench again. And the exact same thing happened again. So idiot number one finally realized it was time to do his set, put his phone down, which sent the subliminal signal to the idiot two and idiot three to put their phone down. They were so melded with the matrix they did not even understand that they were in a commercial gym in public with other humans around them. They were so enamored with their time wasteful technology. And I'm fucking sitting there like sweating, angry, mad, chalk hands, just fucking wanting to put my work in. It, it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just saying this to share just a little experience share with you. Do not be that guy or gal. Do not be that D-bag in the gym on their phone. Resist the urge. Resist the temptation to grab your phone. If you're staring at your phone in the gym, it better because you are on the DolceDiet.com's exercise section and you're just simply looking to see what your next exercise is. Like if you're not doing, if th that's the only valid reason to be staring at your phone in the gym. Maybe to like to like fast forward your playlist or something like that. But if you're scrolling social media, if you're texting someone while you're at the gym, go home, get the get the F out of there. Shame on you. You deserve a timeout. Mommy or daddy should take your phone from you for 30 days. Shame on do not be that person. You look like you just I don't want to be mean if that's you right now. I want to give some grace here. Don't be that person. I'm, let me go this one further. When you walk into a store, leave your phone in your stupid pocket. When you walk into a store and God forbid you have to stand in line, leave your stupid phone in your stupid pocket. And just stand there and smile and be polite. Do not be the selfish prick so bored with society that they have to scroll their stupid phone and continue melting their brain. 
exert self-control. Now, this is a little test. This is what we do in my inner circle, my men's group. This is one of the edicts that we have. Keep your phone in your pocket in public. Watch the compulsion for you to grab your phone. Uh, you walk into a line, you order your coffee, and the barista starts to make it, and you grab your phone and stare at it. Watch the compulsion. Look how trained you are. And when you actually keep your phone in your pocket, look around and look at how silly these other humanoids appear to you. Lacking in self-control. Um, DK says, please, I don't feel confident in my routine coming from people who lie about nutrition. How am I supposed to trust their workouts? Brother, amen. I agree 100% with you. I am happy. If you want to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, I can build you your perfect program. I'm happy to do it. I freaking love, I love to do that. Just click the link below. Let's let's hop on a coaching call. I recently just lowered my rates for a short period of time too. So after summer, I usually throttle down my rates and then Black Friday, I, I, I kick them back up again. I get booked. Like I'll be booked four months in advance here pretty soon. So this is a great time to actually book me at a discount if you're interested. One-on-one -on -one coaching call. I will break down everything for you um, if, if you're interested. I'm happy to do that. Jesse Lee, my brother. See, yep, gym culture is horrible. Uh, Jesse, strong men look their demons in the face every morning and say, today I make you my B word. You have beat me before, but never again. I love that, brother. Uh, do you ever miss that UFC fit Dolce? Pretty handsome guy. Ha, now you resemble a grizzly bear. I know. I, I don't miss that. This is this is always the real man. This is the way I looked before UFC fit, and I had to clean myself up to look like that. Uh, and I remember they wanted me to, like, grow my hair out and, and put in, like, frost my hair and do all that stuff. And I was like... Like, I was like, I'll do it if Lorenzo tells me I have to do it. And Lorenzo said, no, just, he said, man, just be you. Thank you, boss. That was, that was back with Lorenzo Fertitta, uh, genius. Lorenzo Fertitta, uh, was running the, the show and, uh, thank, I mean, so cool that he just let me be myself, but I, you know, I knew I had to shave. I had to clean up because I had to cross over and not be so scary looking. Uh, I'm, I'm well aware of the way that I look. Uh, when I'm, you know, walking around in the world, you know, women tend to like clutch their children and and, and pull them close when I'm walking down the street. Um, and I just really go out of my way with my body, with my mannerisms and my my posture, my smile, like my my energy. And and very quickly, you know, I kind of disarm a lot of people. Um, but I know, you know, shaved head, big bearded guy, fucking muscles rippling. Uh, I never have my shirt off for the most part. I literally just put my shirt on to sit here and do this uh, <laughs> show with you. Uh, I'm not, not just because I'm, I'm literally like I was liver king before fucking liver king. Um, you know, just put it that way in a good way. Much love, Jesse. Right on, man. Uh, any thoughts on Joey Swole? September DDC was great. Ah, Wade, my brother. You know, I don't know Joey very much. One of my former clients was a high-level executive in Vegas. He was actually good friends with Joey. He said Joey was a great guy who battled some demons along the way, and I think we all battle our own demons. Um, so I have not, I've, I don't know Joey at all. I see what he's been, he's been doing recently. I think the stuff he's doing recently is pretty cool. Appreciate you, Jim. Micah, what's up, man? Um, great social psychological tips. Chris, I appreciate that much needed today. Isn't that the truth? We have done several one-on-one -on -one calls with Mike and incredible value. Highly recommend Jim. I appreciate that brother. Thank you so much, man. Always a pleasure and an honor, my friend. Um, is it healthy to have hit and resistance same day in different sessions can be, but it's, it's going to be too much. How many times a week can you do that? Not many. So you really need to look at your periodization template um, and see how it fits. Uh, Jim says, thoughts on Bo Nickel come up. Do you think he has a long way to break through or ready to break into the top 10? Man, any D1 champion can walk right into the top 10. Right, Jim? Any D1 champion can walk right into the top 10. But what happens when Bo Nickel comes up against another all-American level wrestler with hands. That's that's the question. 
Like what happened? What happens when Bo Nickel gets caught? We we that's the question, and you want to learn that lesson outside of the top ten. You and I, I don't. I really haven't followed Bo's MMA career yet. I mean, I'm a big fan. I think he's going to do great. I was a fan of his wrestling career, but I didn't really watch. Um, I didn't really watch his his MMA rise up until he came on the Contender Series, and he's looked dominant. But he should be dominant at that level. He's a national champion, right? How will he do inside the top ten? I think there's some guys he can destroy right now. I mean, put Bo Nickel against Kevin Holland. He he runs right through him. Bo Nickel versus Hamzat. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Hamza, I think Bo's a better wrestler inside the square or inside the uh, the circle. Is Bo a better wrestler inside the octagon with knees and elbows? Maybe. Is Bo a better wrestler, you know, 13 minutes in when both guys are gassed and Hamza still has some hands left? I, I don't I don't know yet. Maybe he maybe he is. We just haven't I haven't had a chance anyway to see it yet. So I think Bo probably needs the ability to make some mistakes where his wrestling and pedigree can get him out of those mistakes to allow for the awareness of what he needs to work on and reinforce. This is kind of what I've seen along the way, working with, with some of the greats. You know, I came up with uh, the wrestlers from team quest, Randy Couture, Matt Lindland, Chael Sonnen, um, you know, those Dan Henderson. I mean, you want to talk about wrestling pedigree, but all those guys, they, they needed a little bit of time to fill in some holes because boom, they get their guy down on the ground. And then man, they got to keep their arms short. And their shoulders shrugged because they were getting caught in arm bars and triangles, right? They're getting camored and Americana. They were getting swept. So point is, like, if they can, if Bo can learn early outside of the top 10, man, that dude, I, within two, if, if Bo's real within two years, we're going to know. So he's going to have, he's probably going to get the uh, Patty O'Malley. <laughs> I think that's the name we use. Patty O'Malley will say, Sean O'Malley and Patty Pimblett, he'll probably get their treatment. And I think he's going to get some good matchups for the next contract before he gets put into the big show. Uh, to be honest, number four, be honest, always, always, always. Um, Brad, what's up, Brad? Good to see you, brother. Welcome, welcome. I hope all is well down there. All right, guys and gals, time to jump out of here. I appreciate you all for being. Actually, I gotta. I'm taking the misses on a date tonight. We got a babysitter and the whole darn thing, um, so it's uh, it's gonna be a nice night. You, all my married friends out there, you understand. But we're we're, we're the you know we eat dinner right in town. We don't go too far, and uh, we're, we're very we're very simple folks over here. But we're looking forward to it. Uh, and the, the kids get to go uh, see some family, which is nice. So that's where I'm leaving to right now. I'm actually gonna go and clean up a little bit because my pheromones are pumping. But anyway, thank you guys. You are awesome. And until next time, boom.